Hey everyone, this is Lokahol. No, I have to say, how's it? How's it, everyone? This is Lokahol coming to you with yet another Fizz, Crit, Exsanguinate, Seismic, Trap, Savage, Sure, League Starter for 3.18. Now, with no class change balances this league, Seismic, Trap, Savage, Sure looks to be one of the top performing league starters for 3.18. Last week, I was able to clear all the new pinnacle bosses on day two or three on just the five link, and I was comfortable clearing the rest of the content in the game. So I can vouch for this. This is a great league starter. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are asking, will this build be able to do the new uber pinnacle bosses? And without doing it myself, I can't say for sure. However, I'm pretty sure that with enough investment, this build will comfortably be able to clear that content. As with all previous versions of the build, this guide contains a detailed path of building leveling tree, so you can see which points to allocate when. It also comes with a detailed spreadsheet, which will show you which gems to allocate when, after doing which quests from which vendor. It also comes with a few handy little tips to help make the leveling process a little bit easier. And then again, as always, the build comes with a shopping list, so you can click on a link to find all the gear that you need for your next upgrade. For mapping, we're gonna be using Exsanguinate Trap. Now, when it's linked with chain support, it's gonna propagate throughout monster packs, clearing them very nicely. It's not as speedy as something like Corrupting Fever or Lightning Strike, however, it clears just fine. And the upside for this build is that it has excellent single target. When it comes to a boss, we're gonna throw a bunch of seismic traps on the ground. I actually like to place them just slightly off to the side of the boss so that the pulses from the seismic trap kind of overlap and hit the boss a bit. But also if there is a bit of a delay before the boss becomes active, you can throw four seismic traps down. That's the number that you have available, the number of charges. But if the boss takes a few seconds to actually become targetable, you can often get down six seismic traps, which is often enough to delete most map bosses and even conquerors and sometimes bigger bosses too. As for leveling, you're going to find all the leveling gems in the path of building and the leveling spreadsheet. But just to go over it quickly, to start off, we're going to be leveling with Stormblast Mine, Orb of Storms and Frost Bomb in Act 1. Before we get to Mervale's Caverns, we're going to pick up Lightning Trap. Once we get that, that'll carry us all the way to Act 3. When we're in Act 3, after killing Gravisius, we're going to get Flamethrower Trap, Seismic Trap and Lightning Spire Trap. Now these together are going to help with our single target throughout the campaign. These all do a ton of damage. You get to a boss, throw them on the ground. They kill the boss very quickly. Once you have the correct links and chain support, and maybe if you're lucky enough to find an early pair of deer stalkers, you can hop over to Exsanguinate Trap and Seismic Trap and then drop all the elemental traps. I normally do this around Act 7 or Act 8. However, if you are comfortable doing it sooner, you can. But up until then, all the elemental traps that we're using in the leveling build will carry you very comfortably up to that point. Other than using Seismic Trap for single target and Exsanguinate Trap for clear, let's go over some of the other gems. These are all listed out in the POB once again. But to start off, we have Grace. This grants us additional evasion rating. You can use Vile Grace if you want, but you might end up with too many buttons. I don't actually really ever push that button. Then we're using Summon Skitterbots. This will chill and shock enemies. More damage. Pride. This also makes nearby enemies take more physical damage. And then we're going to be using Precision. Now, it's very important. If you are low level and you don't have an Enlightened support, make sure you don't over level this gem. Some people will struggle with reserving enough mana. They'll ask me to check out their build and then I'll see they've got a level 20 Precision. Don't do that. Keep it level one and then prioritize your other gems. Lastly, we're using Defiance Banner. And once again, this is a bit more armor, evasion and reduced crit chance. So this is more defensiveness. As for curses, we're using Assassin's Mark. This makes enemies more vulnerable to crits. It also grants us power charges on kill. Then an optional gem is Void Sphere. I just like this skill on most builds, but what it does is you cast a Void Sphere. It sucks the monsters into it, which is nice for your Exsanguinate. It sucks them all and then it chains through them. 
Very nice for that, but very optional. Another optional gem is Enduring Cry. Now this is a war cry that regenerates life and it also grants us endurance charges. So if you feel like the build has too many buttons, you don't have to use it, but personally, I do like it. And then for movement, we have Flame Dash and I've linked all of these with Life Tap. The reason why I've done that is that I've reserved almost all of my mana, but I still wanna be able to cast these even if my mana runs out. So Life Tap lets us use life to cast and because Exsanguinate costs life to cast and because we have Life Tap linked with Seismic Trap, pretty much all of our skills are using life to cast, which is why we are able to reserve almost all of our mana. However, we do need a little bit of mana because we're making use of Bear Trap. This is good for bosses. When you get to a boss, you throw it on the ground, causes them to be immobilized, and then it also applies a slow debuff, and then it also causes them to take more damage from traps. So this is nice for bosses. As you can see, I have reserved too much mana because I overleveled my precision, but we've also linked this with Culling Strike Support. This will just kill off enemies with 10% life or lower. Again, very nice for bosses. You get Maven down to 10%, throw a bear trap, it catches her and she dies. Now, one more defensive layer I've added is Steel Skin. I just place this on my left click. This does use a little bit of mana. So another reason to make sure you have just a little sliver of mana. It is optional, but placing it on your left click means it's auto cast. You don't need to think about it. It's just always happening in the background. The main uniques we're gonna be looking out for, most importantly, early on, are a pair of Deer Stalker boots. These are usually very common, very cheap early on in League. The reason we're using it, Socket Gems are supported by level 11 trap. This essentially turns our four link Exsanguinate trap into a five link Exsanguinate trap. Later on, we're gonna upgrade into Atziri's step. These provide a lot of spell suppression. Spell suppression is good means we don't die a bunch and then once we get those at series steps we're gonna have to make a pair of trap gloves i do have a guide on how to make these gloves that will be linked in the description they don't need to be as fancy as this but once you get at series step you are gonna need some trapper gloves now as for armor in scourge league when i played this build i did use carcass jack however i feel like tinker skin worked a little bit better after the little AOE changes that they made. Some builds and some variations of Seismic Trap prefer Skin of the Lord, Skin of the Loyal. I don't know, I haven't tested it, but I think part of the math, a few other people have different versions of this build that you can check out if you like. They also use Devouring Diadem instead of Crown of the Inward Eye. However, I like Crown of the Inward Eye. It gives us a lot of life, a lot of mana, global energy shield, and transfiguration of soul, body, and mind, which is increased spell damage so that's all very nice. However, if you prefer using a rare helmet with the new influence type, spell suppression, resistances, stats, whatever you need, that's also a perfectly good option. And then Seismic Trap releases an additional wave is a great option for the enchant. Now, another very important item, probably the biggest damage buff to the belt is Cold Iron Point. Ignore the fact that this is scourged. Two of these, in your hands will give both your Seismic Trap and your Exsanguinate Trap plus six gem levels. And because the damage of this scales very, very highly off gem levels, getting two of these and plus six levels is a huge damage boost. As for amulets, you can use Ashes of the Stars early on. That's again, plus one to gems. So it'll give you more damage on your traps. However, once you get a bit later on, you might want to make something like this. However, this is again from Scourge League. It'll look more like plus one level of all skill gems and plus one level of all physical skill gems. But Ashes of the Stars actually might be better than that just for the reservation. The rest of the gear is going to be pretty straightforward. Crit multi, life, resistances, attributes, whatever you need. Same with the belt. Doesn't need to be this fancy. That's all good. And as for my flask, the ones I've gone for are a panicked life flask of corrupted blood immunity, granite flask. This gives us armor. Armor is good. Quartz flask, you can use this if you like. Gives us phasing, lets us run through monsters. Also gives us plus 10% spell suppression. Quicksilver flask, lets us run faster. That actually is a very good defensive layer. And then a jade flask. Jade means more evasion rating, meaning we get hit less, which is good. 
let's just go over some pros and cons before we end. So for pros, we've got very solid, clear and incredibly good single target. It's also potentially fairly tanky. In the one version you saw, I was using a shield. If you use a shield instead of a second cold iron point and cap spell suppression, it's actually a pretty damn tanky build for a shadow. So that's a good upside. It's also very cheap to get up and running. The one thing is that cold iron points within the first couple of days are fairly expensive, but they drop off very, very quickly and become very affordable. Also, it has a very smooth leveling process. If you're not used to traps, it might feel a bit weird, but if you do follow my leveling guide, by the time you get to maps, you'll be very familiar with the play style and you'll be comfortable once you get there. As for cons, uh, like I said, cold iron points might be pricey early on in the first couple of days. However, you can just get a plus one fizz gems wand, which are very cheap. I also have a guide on how to make those, but you can normally get those for a couple of chaos in the first couple of days. And then once cold iron points drop in price, you can grab one of those or two of those. Another thing is the build can struggle with attributes and sometimes even resistances. So you might need to allocate a couple of those nodes on the tree like beef, 30 strength or 30 intelligence just to get in all your gems. But then as you upgrade your gear, you can unallocate those and put it into other points. That's going to be it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the Discord. If you hop in there, there's a lot of helpful people who can give you a hand with this build. Be sure to check out the description for the path building pastebin link, also the leveling guide and the shopping list. And that's going to be it. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe and I'll catch you in 3.18 Sentinel League. Bye bye.